welcome to a slightly warm day in Florida. We had, it was like 28 degrees two days ago. Now it's like 80. <laughs> Florida, man. So, what we're doing today is bringing back the LS Swapped FCRX7. So if you're unfamiliar with this project, I got this as an unfinished project. It is a 5.3 swap T56 uh, FCRX7. So, Basically, I ended up pulling the motor out to put a better pan on it, then it wouldn't fit with the new pan, so I modified the engine mounts to make it fit, and we got kind of it up and running and driving. We got a lot of the odds and ends sorted out, but we've still got a good bit to do. We need to work on some suspension stuff, angle mods, getting the interior finished up, getting some of the wiring finished up and cleaned up, and then hopefully go do some proper rips in this thing. So anyway, that's what we're doing today. I'm excited to get this thing back up and running. I want to drive it at the next event. So we got tires, we got wheels, we got everything we need, we just need to get the car ready. Oh, and we need to do a windshield too. Okay, let's see if this thing will start up. It should. I started it up the other day when it was real cold out. First thing we're going to tackle, first and most important, is suspension. So we've got these rear arms here. Uh, let's see if you can see how bad these are. Uh, the joints are pretty blown out, the threads are destroyed, so uh, basically they're not doing anything. <laughs> so the, the wheel can move like a ton in the wheel well. So I've got a set of adjustable arms to replace those. I've got some nice new tie rods ends to replace the ones that are on the car because I believe the ones that are on the car are for like an S13 or something. I don't think, they, they don't look to be right. You can see how they're straight. Um, the other ones arc up to prevent bump steer. So anyway, we're gonna put those on. I've got a set of modded knuckles, but supposedly they don't fit right. So I'm either gonna mod these knuckles or try to see if I can make those work. Not 100% sure there, but that's another thing that really needs to be handled because that's all the angle we've got right now. And uh, this is a drift car, that is not enough. But before we do any of that, I'm anxious and I wanna weigh it. I got these scales the other day on Facebook Marketplace. I weighed my Subaru, I wanna weigh this thing. I wanna weigh all my cars, so let's weigh it first. All right, post your guesses below. What do you guys got? 2600 flat, Justin? Yeah, you know, I have no clue what an FC is supposed to weigh. No idea either. No idea. Yeah, I don't know. I'm thinking like 2550. I'm going to say 2725. If it's 2550, what's the point of building an LSBI? Damn. Dang, I was close. It's 2754. 2755. 56, 57, 56. Yeah, it's only 40 pounds lighter than the Subaru. <laughs> Granted, it's got an iron block. That's 110 pounds yeah. in a cage. It's 53 front, 47 rear. Well, now we know, 2750. Honestly, kind of heavier than I thought. I was thinking it'd be lighter than that. I mean, it's completely gutted. It's only got one seat in it. It's got a shell of a dash, all the wiring stripped out besides the basics, but it is iron block V8 T56 stock. Turbo 2 diff, cage, front and rear bash bars, rear overs, but stock doors with windows. It's not like the windows are cut out or anything, but I mean, this thing's gutted, dude. 2750, that's kind of wild. 
I'm real curious to see once we weigh the LS Miata what it weighs. So anyway, I'm gonna get these scales out of the way and uh, get to work. I just, I got these and I can't, I can't help myself but to play with them and figure out what everything weighs. Down one to go. You can see how uh, mint these are. So here's what we got to replace them. There's not many companies that make anything for these cars, and these are really about the only adjustable arms I know of that anyone makes. I mean, I'm sure somebody's somebody's got to make. At least these we can. Dial in our alignment a little better, and hopefully our wheels won't be flopping around in the uh, fender wells. One down, one to go. are in we need to uh, kind of get this thing on the ground see where everything's at and try to adjust them and set them where we need them with the rear adjustable arms on and roughly set we can move on to the front we'll need to align the rear but I'm gonna do that all at the same time because I'll need to align the front as well so what we need to do now is start pulling this apart to get our knuckle off so we can modify it I can't find my modded knuckles and from what I understand they don't fit yeah let's get this knuckle off <laughs> Kind of interesting, these have aluminum hubs. One thing we will need that we don't have is some inner tie rod spacers. Basically what those do is they go between the inner tie rod and the rack and allow the rack to turn further. Ball joint is uh, in dire need of replacement as well. the knuckle off. This ball joint really needs to be replaced, but it is pretty stuck in here. Let's take this over to the bench. All right, so basically what we're gonna be doing is moving this tie rod pickup point closer to the pivot point of the knuckle. What that's going to do is, uh, let me see, let me clamp this down, hold on. Okay, basically, with the tie rod pickup point out here, uh, let me get a tape measure. <laughs> I wanna do a proper demonstration of this. Okay, so, we've got eight inches to the bandsaw. So if we go two inches, we're turned that far. Now, if we move this, in here, so we'll go back to straight. So we're at nine inches, because it's further in. We'll go to 11, it's a little tricky. It's not very scientific, but you'll get the idea. You can see that it turns further. Basically, the further, the closer in we are to the pickup point, the further the knuckle's gonna turn for a given amount of travel at the tie rod. So the tie rod turns two inches here, it's gonna be 25 degrees of angle if it turns two inches here, it might be 45, 50, 60 degrees of angle. Obviously there's ways to calculate that, but we're not gonna go that far in depth, just the general principle. So the tricky part with this knuckle, is you can see that the arm angles down and then it angles in. So we're gonna have to cut after this angle to maintain this because this is what prevents it from hitting the uh, brake rotor, which is what I think is wrong with those other knuckles. I think they were done straight. Like they cut it off here and then welded it on straight. It'll be a little tricky, but I think we can figure it out.
similar. We got this one tacked up, throw it on the car, see how it fits, etc. All right, so I maintained the factory angle of the pickup point. As you can see, the stock tie rod is angled up to account for that, prevent bump steer. Whatever tie rods these came off of, this inner is different. This one doesn't thread onto it. Um, and then this is flat, obviously. So if we maintain that same kickback, you can see that just at static ride height, this tie rod end is completely maxed out. It can't pivot any further this way. So I think what we're gonna do, since I already have these in here, and it'll make life easier if I do sphericals, because sphericals are gonna be a straight heim with a spherical end. They're not gonna have the kick that this does. Oh, get out of there. Anyway, what I think I'm gonna do is cut this even shorter, keep it angled back, because the reason for the angle back is to prevent the tie rod from hitting the rotor, the rotor so that's important. Um, but cut it shorter, keep it kicked back the same amount, and then rotate it flat. So let's try that. All right, now we got some pretty decent angle for just cut knuckles, no tie rod spacers. You can see we're still clearing to the rotor. Not bad at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy it for the next knuckle. All right, I got both knuckles tacked up and ready to go. I've measured them. We're gonna do a real hot pass and we're probably gonna do at least one more pass over that and maybe another one over that. Basically as many passes as we can fit. I've grooved them out a bit to get some more penetration with the weld. And uh, yeah, it shouldn't be too bad. Pass number two. First pass turned out really good, welding nice and smooth. We're gonna go through and just basically weave our way up until we kind of get to the top of this piece. I guess we should add some more heat to it. Probably do one more pass, at least on the top side. <clears throat> Not really a lot of room to do another pass on the rest of it. All righty, I threw some paint on the knuckles. They got three passes each. I, I definitely don't see that breaking. But anyway, we gotta let those dry, so we're gonna move on to some other projects. All right, the next thing I wanna tackle is fans. This thing has the uh, slim fans on it. There's plenty of room for bigger fans. These are not gonna keep this thing cool. There's just not a chance. That is like one of my biggest pet peeves is having a drift car that gets hot. I hate having to do, you know, like you do two laps and you gotta let the thing cool down. No bueno. So we're gonna replace these fans with some race fans that I have as spares from my Miata and uh, they should work a lot better. So we gotta get this shroud off and I wanna rib nut it so I don't have to use nuts and bolts like it's on there now. Uh, but yeah, let's take it apart. Ta-da! You can see how big of a difference it is between your basic slim fan and a Mishimoto race fan. These race fans are wild. They pull so much air. I have a pair of these smaller ones, like 10 inch or 11 inch on my on the LS Miata. The car never gets hot. It's just based on the design. You look at like the pitch of the blades, how much more aggressive it is on these versus these and the size of the blades and everything. No matter what, one of these is not gonna pull as much air as one of these. So if you can fit a bigger fan, do it. Lesson of the day.
Easy enough. Now we got our fans mounted. Rib nuts. I love using rib nuts on stuff like this because, you know, if I need to pull a fan out, I can weave the shroud in the car and just undo these. I don't have to get back behind here with a wrench. I love rib nuts. Most of you already know that, but rib nuts are my jam. So these fit mint though. Let's get this thing back in the car. Boom, still plenty of clearance. All right, our paint is dry enough on our knuckles now to put them back on. I went ahead and got the hubs on each one. So now we just need to reassemble the suspension and then we can see what how much angle it has. I've got a wedding thing to go to here in a minute, but I'm really excited about to see what the angle's like. So it'll have to wait. One side done. I do need to center the rack though, because if it's offset one way or the other, we'll have more angle on one side than the other. Go ahead and take this off, get the other side thrown on, and then we'll center the rack. I just wanted to make sure that it still fit with the rotor, because that was the problem with the other knuckles. All right, we got the rack centered, we got the tie rods in and adjusted correctly. So the wheels are roughly straight, we'll have to actually align it, but you know, baseline. So now we can put the wheel on and see what kind of angle we have. All right, it's time to see what kind of angle we have. Keep in mind, again, we don't have inner tie rod spacers, so we're limited by rack travel, or we're, we'll most likely be limited by rack travel. So once we get those, that should add about 10 degrees. So let's see. I mean, that's pretty solid, dude. That is pretty good. That's a solid 50 to 55, I would guess. Let's see what, oh, we're hitting on the, we're hitting on the control arm. I don't even think we're maxed out. I wonder if I have any spacers. 5 by 114. Oh, I used them for. I think that's bottomed out. No. Wow. Dang, that's full lock. That's that's solid. That's super solid. Angle never looks as crazy as it is. I mean, that's that's a good bit of angle. That might be as much as 60. That's solid. I'm really happy with that. Again, that's no tie rod spacers. So we are going to need to put the front wheel spacers on because we're hitting on the control arm and this side, the trailing wheel. Uh, I mean, it, it's clearing, but it's real close to the frame rail there. It'll probably hit it under load. But I mean, look at that. That's super solid. Man, I am so happy with that. Now I'm in a food coma, but we're gonna get some more work done. But what I wanna do now, I wanna back this thing out of here and try to get the wheels turned fully. So in the air, I could get the tire to hit the control arm. You can see here, I can't muscle the wheel enough to turn it any further than this without the car moving. So we can go outside and use kind of the load of the car turning to get the wheel to go to full angle. See if we're still hitting on the control arm with the car on the ground and see what the angle looks like. So let's do it. Well, without power steering, I couldn't really get the wheels to turn any further than I could get them to turn without the car moving. So when you do angle mods, you're essentially quickening the steering ratio because you have the same steering ratio, say it's two turns lock to lock, except now the wheels turn twice as far each direction. So you're effectively quickening it by 100%, whatever you want to call it. But in turn, the steering gets a lot heavier because basically you have way less mechanical advantage over the wheel. So Anyway, we definitely need to get power steering on this car that is on the list. We're either going to do, we're going to try our, the electric Volvo pump and put it in the bay, see if it works, or I have the uh, normal GM pump off my LS Miata. Another thing I want to tackle, tired of this. So the seat position, I want it to lean back a little more and I've got a different seat I want to put in, but pedal wise, it's good. My leg is just under fully extended with the clutch out, brakes, good spot, gas, everything feels good like it should but the steering wheel on the other hand 
is way too close. Uh, those of you who've watched my drift reviews, you know I love steering wheels being close to me, but this is this is another level. This is I this is way too close. Like I my arms are fully tucked by my side. I mean I could probably drive it like this, but um, it's not very comfortable. I am literally sitting on top of the wheel. So what we're gonna do, maybe we'll see if it's gonna work. Uh, let me show you what we got. So I bought this dirt track wheel and quick release setup literally six, seven years ago to use in a S chassis that I had and I never got around to using it. Never got around to installing it. So I wanna put it in this car. You know, I've been saving it for a car and I'll use it on this, I'll use it on that. I'm, I'm probably never gonna use it on anything else. So I might as well use it on this car or at least try to. So what we'll need to do is take that hub adapter off, weld these splines onto the steering shaft. So I need to get those off and basically figure out whether or not this is gonna fit over the shaft, which I'm pretty sure it will, and if we can easily weld it on there. So let's try that. Oh, these are some tiny Allens. Yeah, so this new setup should be shorter, which is the logic reason for doing it. But again, the other reason is just, oh no, come on. The other reason is I just want to, because I've had it for six years and I've never used it on anything. All right, we got the stock set up off. Let's see how this goes on. Oh man, that is almost perfect. We'll have to make sure we get it centered so it doesn't like spin around, you know, if it's, if it's tilted one way or the other, it's gonna spin and be like, rum, 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 which we don't want that. Don't lose those. Oh man, it's kind of weird. It's almost too far away now. And maybe it just seems far away because of how far away it was before, because this seems fine. All right, so I had to mull it over for a minute because obviously once I weld this on, there is no going back unless I change the steering column. So I definitely want to make sure this is what I want to do. Uh, but I realized I can buy a spacer if I don't like it. If it's too close up, I can buy a two inch spacer, cut it down to one inch, use it as full two inch. I, I can get this thing wherever I want it. It's definitely far enough forward. It'll just be whether or not we want to move it back some. So. I think I'm gonna go for it. I think so. I measured, I like where the steering wheel is in the Miata and it's 22 inches from the face of the steering wheel to the back of the seat. And this is about 22 inches as well. Uh, I think the seat will have to move. It'll have to go down some because I think my helmet's gonna hit this bar. But either way, I, I think this is an okay spot. And again, worst case, we can scoot it back some. So let's get to it. All right, we got it centered. I think that's about as good as it's gonna get. It was definitely a little trickier to weld than anticipated because you just can't really get to it because without pulling the shaft out of the housing and then, uh, you know, where it is and yeah. Anyway, I'm not gonna make excuses, but it was a little tricky, but I think we're good. Um, I don't think we're gonna have any problems with it. All right, steering wheel's in. We got it plug welded in the center here too and I ground that down so the steering wheel fits good. We don't have any interference there. So I think we're fine, um, but yeah, it looks good. Like I said, I've always wanted to put this in something, so it's nice to finally have it in something. This car is a hodgepodge of spare parts that I've had. I haven't really bought much for it, just throwing parts that were otherwise unused on it. I am so impressed with the amount of angle this thing has and we're not even maxed out. You can see we're touching on the trailing wheel here and look at how much further the rack can go. It can go about a rack spacer's distance, you know, five to 10 mil. So that'll get us another five, maybe 10 degrees past this, which I mean, this is already a pretty solid amount. I'm really, really happy with how that came out. However, 
As you can see, it's dark outside. It's getting late. We are unfortunately pretty much out of time. That's pretty much all we can do today on the old FC RX-7. I did a bunch of normal people stuff this weekend, so I didn't have as much time to work on this thing as I would have liked, but we do still have a good bit to do. The electric power steering setup, wiring, cooling, intake, yada yada. We got a good bit more to do. We're gonna go rip it, and I'm gonna try to get it to a drift event this coming week. So lots of exciting stuff in store for the old FC and uh, everything else in the fleet. Everything needs more work and more exciting parts, so you guys know the drill. But this is essentially the end of the video, so I just wanna say thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, I really appreciate it. I hope to see you for the next one, but until then, goodbye.